Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Shana Waltower. Already, many of you were ditching the turkey today with hopes of scoring an early Black Friday deal. Some big stores are already welcoming shoppers tonight. Notably, JCPenney stores have been open since 2 this afternoon. That sounds more like Black Thursday. Crim 2's Taylor Vito shows us a look at local shoppers getting ready. All right, how often are we showing you something like this? A line of people waiting to get into a JCPenney's. A line so long it was visible from across the street at the Spokane Valley Mall. Just down the road. I've been out, gosh, since 1 o'clock. The Church of Best Buy, you might call it, was in session. These folks were hours early before the tech store opened at 5 p.m. Shopper Cameron Blackburn had a unique way of staying busy. I brought, uh, I brought some wood with me. Hey, um, boredom-wise, there's my, nothing uh, some good old-fashioned whittling can't fix. And, uh, Blackburn planned to down. turn this branch so into a cat tree. Kind of brought book to read. Um, I brought uh, a notepad just to, to sketch some things out for the cat tree or for, uh, you know, just other woodworking ideas. He was waiting to score on a big screen TV. Best Buy's Black Friday ads show deals on tablets, headphones, and TVs. Blackburn decided to skip Thanksgiving dinner altogether. He wasn't alone. Oh, probably pretty crazy standing out here, but had nothing better to do today, so I figured might as well. At the South Hill Target, Diane Quiggle was first in line. Well, my daughter's birthday's in a week, so I'm going to get her a tablet. Like Best Buy, Target was set to open at 5 p.m. Some people were driving by the store looking to see if it was open yet. Quiggle filled them in. Uh, strategy, just sitting here looking around watching people come up and see if they're close. This afternoon, nothing compared to the J.C. Penny line, though. Families made it clear they were eager for deals. And at Best Buy, well, I got time and I got daylight. These guys were eager to wait. In Spokane Valley, Taylor Vido, Cram 2 News. All right, thanks, Taylor. Always amazed at the dedication for Black Friday deals. Well, we're expecting some moderate traffic on the roads as we head into the weekend. Tomorrow, heavy traffic is expected in the afternoon for travelers planning on heading west. But the heaviest traffic is going to be this weekend when many people are heading home. If you're hoping to avoid the congestion, travelers are advised to leave early in the morning or later in the day. And millions of people are traveling for the holiday. You're taking a look at a live flight tracking map. You can see just how many planes are flying right now. If you're flying, experts say give yourself plenty of time to get through security. And some people are already lining up tonight to score some Black Friday deals. Michelle, how cold could they expect temperatures to get? Kind of depends on whether they're going to be going out this evening for some really early shopping or early tomorrow morning. Um, it's going to be definitely very chilly early tomorrow morning. Fortunately, we're not dealing with the winds that we saw yesterday, so that's helping us out just a little bit. Winds are now only three miles an hour at Spokane, a little bit breezier still in North Idaho, Coeur d'Alene and Sandpoint seeing winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So there's going to be a little bit more of a wind chill out there. Satellite and radar showing mostly clear skies, though, across much of the inland northwest and good news there. Roads are clear. Currently, temperatures are already in the low to mid 20s, 25 Spokane, 23 in Coeur d'Alene, and it's now slipped down to the 20s in Moses Lake. Uh, upper 20s right now in Lewiston. A little bit of a breeze out there is already making it feel like it's in the teens with wind chills in the teens from Spokane into North Idaho. Still feels like uh, the mid 20s out in Moses Lake. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Clear skies, temperatures slipping from the lower 20s tonight into the teens early tomorrow morning. Good news for travelers late this weekend for Saturday and Sunday. Clear skies across the Cascade Passes on Saturday. No additional precipitation, rain or snow at Lookout and I-84, but on Sunday, Isolated snow showers possible east or westbound across the mountains and could see a little bit of uh, messier weather along that I-84 corridor, a little bit of rain and snow on Sunday. Here's a look at the next three days. Sunny and cold tomorrow, a few more clouds to, on Saturday, mostly cloudy, a high of 30 lows again in the teens on Saturday and Sunday. Chance of a few flurries on Sunday with highs in the low 30s. All right, Michelle, we'll make sure to bundle up. Well, one out of every three families in the U.S. serves some kind of salad on Thanksgiving, but this year there's a serious warning about serving romaine lettuce. The CDC says these E. coli infections have been reported across 19 states, including here in Washington and Idaho. The agency says the romaine lettuce is coming from Salinas, California. A farmer from West Western Washington is weighing in on the latest outbreak. Lettuce season typically lasts from May or June until October, so if you're buying romaine lettuce, it's likely being shipped in. The farms are so big that one 
worker who doesn't wash his or her hands or you know one animal gets into the field might in fact might touch one head of lettuce or a handful but they're washed and processed together in these enormous batches and shipped all over the country that it's it's in part a problem of scale. He says 95% of the lettuce we eat is most likely coming from California and Arizona. At least two people from Western Washington have gotten sick from E. coli. And more than 38 million people nationwide are living below the poverty line. It's why on days like today, countless volunteers spend time prepping, cooking and serving meals for those in need. And one mission in our nation's capital is providing something more than a warm meal this year. They're dishing out hope. Workers at the Central Union Mission are providing services to help people get back on their feet. What's it going to take to get a guy to be complete and work through his issues and be able to leave here one day? So while the mission is serving people every single day, our goal is to try to solve homelessness one man at a time. Yes, sir. Those at this mission are leaving full and filled with support. Volunteers say it's important not only to think about and help the less fortunate during the holidays, but all throughout the year. And an accidental text from three years ago is reuniting an unlikely friendship this Thanksgiving. 62-year-old Juan Dinch and 20-year-old Jamal Hitton are spending dinner together tonight. Back in 2016, Dinch accidentally texted Hinton, inviting him to her Thanksgiving dinner. She thought she was texting her grandson. Well, Hinton replied that it wasn't him, but he asked Dinch if he could still try her Thanksgiving cooking. She responded, of course you can. And that's how their annual tradition started. They've been meeting up every Thanksgiving since then.